well, it's 2 p.m. So, um, so Steve, if you want to say hello. Yes, I would like to say hello and welcome everybody to this, our first webinar, our 2022 cruise and uh, the flowers in Amsterdam and introduce Judy O'Brien from Maine County Tours to do the webinar. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to probably try to mute you just in case you hear any background music in there and then I'll turn you back on later. If I can get you muted or just try to turn your button on mute. Thanks, everybody. Welcome. Northern Illinois University. That's awesome. You guys are going to be going on Tulip Time on the Rhine with Stephen in 2022. This was my second river cruise, um, and I actually went in May. I went on the Tulip Time on an Emerald ship back in 2015, so I'm really excited to share this with you today. Um, uh, I'm going to give you just a second to look at the front page here because this is giving you Compass Travel and Stephen's information with his email address and his phone number. Um, and just in case uh, you don't have your flyer, I want to make sure that you have your uh, tulip time on the Rhine flyer. If you don't have one today to follow along, that's okay. Uh, we can easily email you one later or even mail you one later. Okay, so this, show, this trip is going out April 21st to May 1st. I'm going to give you a little background on Mayflower Cruises and Tours and myself. And then we're gonna jump into the itinerary and the ship information. Okay, so I'm from Mayflower Cruises and Tours. You're like, who's that? Well, we're from, we were from Downers Grove, Illinois. The previous owners are John and Mary Stacknick, the couple you see on the left. And they were owned this company for 40 years and founded it in 1979. The handsome gentleman on the right is Glenn Maroney. He is the owner of Scenic. He owns those beautiful river cruise ships, those scenic ships, the Emerald Waterway ships, which you're gonna be sailing on. He built a couple beautiful yachts like the Scenic Eclipse and the Emerald Azura. And uh, now he owns Mayflower Cruises and Tours, which he acquired in 2018. Can you guys still see me? Hold on one second. Let me just make sure that you guys can see my, there we go. Okay, so a little bit of background about myself. My name's Judy O'Brien. I'm the business development manager for Northern Illinois, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Been with Mayflower Cruises and Tours since 1988 to 03. I left for about nine years. I came back in 2012 to present. I used to work around about 13 different states, and they narrowed me down to a couple states now. But you can see all the river cruises I've been on, the Rhine, the Danube, Danube Christmas Markets, Portugal, and the Doro. I know a lot about river cruising with Mayflower Cruises and Tours, so I'll be happy to answer any questions. There's actually a picture of me in Budapest on our Danube River Cruise. I have a lovely black lab named Zoe, and my son over there on the bottom right, we were in Alaska last year, Tyler, attends the University of Iowa. He'll be a junior this year, um, and we were lucky enough to do our Alaska Adventure Cruise last year, so... A little bit about me, I live in Naperville, Illinois. So on this trip and all of the Mayflower Cruises and Tours trips, um, we give you either a home or local pickup. So you can kind of determine where you live by this map right here. And I know you guys are out in the DeKalb area, so um, we're gonna be picking you up from home in that area. So um, as far as I know, is that DeKalb right there, right in the blue, okay? If you need a group pickup, or Steven gets a nice group going and he decides he wants you all to be picked up from one area, we'll let you know about that later on because that can be also planned for you guys as well. So we're gonna be taking care of all your transportation on this tour. Free airfare people, this is what is really nice. I told Steven, if you plan this ahead of time, this is giving you guys plenty of time to pick the cabins of your choosing, but you're gonna get free airfare and you're gonna get an additional $150 off per person if you book early enough, so that's gonna bring you back down to 2021 pricing, which is kind of a, even an extra special deal. Um, all of your baggage is gonna be a handle for you. Um, this trip is actually arriving in Zurich, Switzerland, okay? So that's what's nice about river cruising. I'll show you in a minute. You're gonna hit, be hitting four countries on one vacation. So with Mayflower Cruises and Tours, we always give you two extra nights to spend outside of the river cruise. And we're going to be going to Zurich uh, and heading over to Lucerne, Switzerland, where we'll spend two nights. So you're going to do a, uh, we're going to pick you up. We're going to take you to Chicago O'Hare Airport. 
You're gonna get all checked in, check your baggage, you're gonna get on that plane, you're gonna relax. You're gonna enjoy a wonderful overnight flight. Um, they're gonna serve you a nice dinner and drinks. You'll be able to watch movies, relax, get four or five hours of sleep if possible. Um, so then when you arrive in Zurich, you'll be met by your uh, Mayflower representative or an Emerald Waterways representative right at the airport waiting for you. They'll direct you over to the coach where you will put your luggage, give it to the driver, and from then on, you don't have to touch your luggage. It'll be waiting for you in Lucerne, Switzerland at the hotel. It'll be waiting for you later on on the, uh, on, on the cruise. Now we're gonna use Professional Emeralds Activities Cruise Managers on board. Um, so this is one of the young ladies that was on one of my river cruises a couple of years ago. She was excellent. So she's gonna be taking care of all the activities on board. So whether we're gonna be doing our included excursions, there might be an active bike ride that she might be planning that would be a guided bike ride. There might be um, some fun in the lounge after dinner, you know, on board entertainment or trivia games or dancing all the different types of uh, entertainment that we'll be doing on the ship and off the ship, she'll be helping organize, he or she. Um, we'll also have a professional Mayflower business manager with you throughout the duration of this trip, okay? Just a little extra eyes and ears um, to help along in case of any emergencies or um, if any uh, um, of the travelers just, you know, have certain questions or whatever, just somebody else to go to to ask. We'll be using, of course, the local step-on guides, local historians from the areas that we're visiting. And we'll be using those wonderful personal listening devices. So spread out if you want. You guys can don't have to be right standing next to that uh, tour guide that's talking because now you've got these wonderful audio whispers. You can hear them and you could be 100 feet away from them and you can still hear them. So take your time, stroll, take some pictures. You'll be able to hear them, no problem. Um, Emerald Waterways, so guess what? We're four star newer ships. I think the oldest ship was built in 2014 or 2015. Um, and one of them's already being refurbished and it's only five years, five and a half years old, okay? They really take care of their ships. Um, we have the Star Series. That means they're all identical. We have the Emerald Sun, the Emerald Star, the Emerald Sky, the Emerald Destiny. We're building a brand new ship called the Emerald Luna. Uh, right now it's being built. Um, we have a wonderful swimming pool on board. It's on the horizon deck, all English speaking staff. And we have lots of different fully chartered ships and partially chartered ships. Free airfare, transfers in your destination will be included when we book your air. All your gratuities are included. Did you know that? Isn't that nice? Complimentary beverages, including your beer, wine and soft drinks during lunches and dinners. And of course, uh, uh, 24 hour on like coffee, teas, things like that. Breakfast, lunch, and multi-course dinners are included on board. We'll talk about those in a little bit in your personal headset devices. Now, I know I just mentioned this, but I always like to say we're having an amazing vacation and you know how thirsty work that can be, right? So don't forget, we have those complimentary teas and coffees that are available at all times throughout your cruise. But to accompany those lunches and dinners, they've carefully chosen that beautiful European red and white wines or local beer or soft drinks for you to enjoy your meal. Now, just to bring up um, while we're talking about that, when we arrive on the ship, um, you will be brought into the lounge while you're there making sure that your uh, luggage is in your cabins before you can check in. So um, we, there'll be little menus on the tables in the lounge. You can take a look at one of those menus. This is an opportunity, if you want, to upgrade your package. Right now you're getting a beer, wine, and soft drink during lunch and dinner package. Maybe you wanna upgrade that to that you want beer, wine all day, anytime you wanna order one. You can pay an extra fee for that. Maybe you wanna do a cocktails, uh, have spirits involved. Maybe you want that martini before dinner or after dinner or a nice bourbon. Uh, you can certainly um, ask to add that on and pay for a seven night package on that. So that's an optional for you to do. Unique dining experiences. You know, this is something Mayflower likes to throw in. And when you're on a river cruise every day and every night and every morning is a unique dining experience. Because uh, here's me actually on the Danube uh, Christmas Markets cruise. Because they give you just so many different options, so many different, um, you're tasting so many different uh, nice delicacies from those areas. Your breakfasts and lunches are going to be buffet style. 
And then your dinners are four plated, beautiful plated uh, dinner. Um, they'll give you a choice of uh, usually three entrees. You've got the chef's selection, and then there'll be two other selections. This is the time to let Stephen know on your reservations if you have any um, dietary uh, needs, if you're diabetic, if you're gluten-free, if you're vegan, what, whatever. They're going to be able to accommodate you. But the only way to really make sure you're accommodated is if it's marked on your reservation form because we'll need to let the chefs know that on the ship as well as the chef at the hotel. So this is, I don't know what I was eating here today. I want to say it's either beef or lamb, but it was delicious. Of course, it's all about the delicious desserts on board. And then the wine, you can see me drinking some wine in the background. Here's another dessert. And I like to point this one out because this is the one we had at our farewell dinner. So they're going to ask me, what are we supposed to wear on this cruise, Judy? Well, you're supposed to dress casual when you're out touring during the day, breakfast, lunches, casual, as you're touring, you want to be comfortable, comfortable walking shoes. Depends on the weather. You guys going at a great time of year. It might be nice and warm. You don't, you know, you don't necessarily need to wear, even wear long jeans. Maybe you're wearing shorts, but when you're going to be dressing up for dinner, um, business casual is fine. Um, there's two nights that are a little bit dressier. That would be a welcome reception night and a farewell dinner captain's dinner night. Not, you don't have to by any means wear a cocktail evening dress or anything or a tuxedo or anything like that. Um, just if you want to spuff it up a little more those nights you can. Um, a nice maybe a dinner jacket for the gentlemen. Um, ladies certainly can wear different types of dress pants and blouses. If they want to wear a dress that's fine. Whatever you feel comfortable in it's going to be a beautiful dinner. Um, this is just one of my groups that was their first River cruise ever was the tulip time on the Rhine last year. She said, I don't know if anybody will want to go. Oh yeah, she sure did. She got about 30 people to go and they had a blast. So this is all that everything we just talked about is the Mayflower experience. We really want to give everybody a wonderful life enriching experience. With that being said, don't forget your passport needs to be good for six months after returning on this tour. So if we get back May 1st, June, July, August, September, October, November, your passport needs to be good till the end of November of 2022. So double check your passports. You guys have plenty of time to get those updated. So here's the hotel that we stay at in Europe and Lucerne, in Switzerland. It'll be either the um, Hotel Europe or uh, one similar, but this is the one that I stayed at. You can maybe notice right in the front, there's a couple little blue signs. That is a bus stop right in front of the hotel, okay? So if you don't want to walk down into the city center when we have free time some days, because um, it is a little bit of a walk, you can certainly jump on the bus for a little bit of a uh, little money and they'll take you right down there and give you a ride back. This is the view that I took of right across the street from that hotel I just showed you. This is right across the street. So you see beautiful Lake Lucerne, you've got Mount Olympus right there. Um, and then you can see that it's a nice walkway. You take that walkway all the way down to where the chapel bridge is and everything. It actually will take you right past a casino too and a couple other uh, different places along the way. It's a really neat little European old world elegance type of hotel. This is the um, lounge area. You know, you've got that old world the theme with the dark woods. Um, the rooms are really nice, large, well-appointed. I had a little terrace out there that overlooked the lake that was really nice. And now let's talk about the trip. I think I've got the wrong date on here for you. It's 2022. I've got your flyer right here. Sorry about that, you guys. Looks like you guys are going out on the May 1st, I think it is. So here we go. April 21st. April 21st to May 1st. Now here's a little map for you, kind of shows you that we're coming into Zurich. You see the airplane there, spend two nights in Lucerne, Switzerland. We have an optional to Mount Pilatus. Then we're gonna motor coach and we're gonna board the ship in Basel. And we're gonna then, that's right on the border there. And then we're gonna sail up through different France, Germany and the Netherlands. Here's Lucerne, Switzerland. If anybody want, everybody, ugh, if anybody watches the Amazing Race. You'll know that one of the clues was on the Chapel Bridge one year. This is a really cool bridge. It's got some unbelievable murals in there. 
Um, it actually, I want to say, caught on fire in the 80s, but they were able to put it out and save, I think, at least half of the bridge and the murals, and then they rebuilt it. So look at beautiful Lucerne, Switzerland. What a beautiful little European city just nestled in the mountains and the meadows of Europe, of Switzerland. Um, and you're going to have a nice little city tour. You're also going to have free time here on your own as well. So during your city tour, um, you'll be walking around. They'll tell you all about the, the, the history of Lucerne. This is the Sleeping Lion Monument. You definitely want to make sure that your guide either takes you by the Sleeping Lion Monument. This, this is a statue that represents um, the soldiers that died in the war that they had. Um, so just a really nice little walking tour. And then once your walking tour is over, let me just get your flyer here. I just want to follow along here on this. Um, okay, so we arrive on day two. Let, let me just rewind really quick, guys, okay? Day one, you fly over. Day two, you get met at the airport. You go to the hotel, you check in, you relax for a little while. You can walk around Lucerne on your own, okay? I showed you where the bus stop was showed you where you can just walk around the lake if you want, relax, and then we'll have a welcome dinner that first night at the hotel, okay? Now we're on day three, if you're following along on your little flyer, okay? Day three, city tour of Lucerne. We'll have an included breakfast at the hotel, and then we'll get our included walking tour with highlights of the city's landmarks. So the 14th century Chapel Bridge, of course, and with its paintings that I mentioned, and there it is. Look at the swans. You're gonna find a lot of really cool different swans and ducks and birds on this trip. Um, we'll see the 17th century town hall and the town squares and we're all uh, set in the beautiful backdrop of the Swiss Alps. So after our city tour, the remainder of the day is at leisure. Okay, so what I did was the guide ended our trip. I just stayed right in the town right there and a few of us went out and found a nice little place to have uh, lunch. And then later on that evening, as you're walking around, you can um, shop, do whatever, and find a nice restaurant or something that you want to go to for dinner the night, because this is the time that's on your own. Our next day on day four, this is a really exciting event. It's an optional tour. It goes to Mount Pilatus. I thought this was one of the most exhilarating things I've done in my life. I've done a, I've done a lot of things. And I thought it was really cool. So, um, there's two gondola rides. This is the first one. You can see two ladies in there and there's two on the other side. It holds four people, okay? It'll take you up one tier. Then we get in the big gondola. That one holds about 50 people or at least 30. I thought it was larger. So then you really start climbing up the mountain and, and you get so close. It, it just feels like we're just so close to the mountain, but we're just going straight up. When you get up to the top, you can see I'm bundled up there with gloves on, a scarf, and I just kind of layered my um, jacket and uh, sweater, things like that. Um, what, um, because we're on the top of a mountain in Switzerland, so it gets colder up there, you don't have to go outside, okay? I went outside. I went out and walked around these little tunnels and took a couple of pictures, so that's why I made sure I had my gloves and stuff. It's always best to be prepared when you're on a tour. You can sit in your suitcase if they want, if you don't ever need them, but at least you have them just in case you need them. This is kind of what it looks like on the top there. It's a big, huge uh, building and people can walk around the outside or inside. You can see folks here um, upon arrival that you don't ever have to go outside if you don't want. There's a lot of different exhibits. Of course, there's food there. And uh, I love buying souvenirs um, like Christmas ornaments and chocolates and things like that. You can get up there. You can just sit down and have a snack with your friends if you want. On our way back down, or this might have been on the way up, I can't remember now, there's a little church just sitting up there. I don't know who built it. I don't even know how it got up there, but I thought it was kind of neat to see this cute little tiny church on the top of um, Mount Pilatus. So you got Mount Pilatus right here as well coming down. And uh, so just a really nice excursion. Um, later on today, now on day four, is when we're going to be leaving by motor coach to Basel. So we're saying goodbye to Lucerne. Make sure during your shopping and free time, you go get some of those chocolates or whatever it is that you might want from Switzerland, okay? So later on today, we're heading over. Say goodbye to, to Switzerland. We're heading over to the ship. And here we go. Let's talk about the ship now, shall we? 
If you guys are following along with the flyer, you're gonna wanna look at the back where the cabin categories are, because that's what we're gonna talk about today, okay? Um, I just like to point out pictures. This is kind of like if you've never been on a river cruise before, you're sitting in these charming European towns. <laughs> you're really just gonna be blown away. I know I am on every single one I go to. So this is the entryway to the ship. Our ships are contemporary, elegant, um, just really fresh and new. I'm gonna start out with the different types of cabins, okay? This is an Emerald Stateroom cabin and it's located on the Riviera deck. This is the lower level right here. Okay, categories D and E. Um, so different pricing on the categories, meaning are you gonna be in the front of the ship or the back of the ship? It doesn't really matter um, where you are, but if you wanna be in the front or the back, it's up to you. This is 160 square feet and it's got everything all the other rooms have, except it's smaller for 160 square feet, and you have only a tiny fixed window that does not open, okay? The beds are pushed together as two beds. You have to tell us on your reservation if you have, if two ladies are in the room, you want two beds, if you want one bed, whatever you guys want to do. One bed or two beds, put that on your reservation. These are the cabins I really want to talk to you about. We were the first cruise line to um, introduce the Panorama Balcony Suites. The reason why we call them panoramic balcony suites is because they have an open air system. You're gonna walk past your 180 square foot cabin um, and you're gonna walk over to that window and you're gonna push a little button on the window and that window's gonna drop down. Now you've got fresh air coming in your room, open air system. So the balcony is actually in your room. There's the table and two chairs right there. When you push that window down, it makes it feel like you have that balcony right in your suite. You've got all the same wonderful storage ca uh, capabilities there with your closet and um, a dresser, a nice, wonderful TV that you can watch movies at night, one bed or two, and wonderful amenities and a beautiful shower in the bathroom too, 180 square feet. These are found on the Vista deck, middle deck. Category C in the back of the ship. It's cheaper than category B in the front of the ship. The ship is not a huge ship, you guys. It only holds about 176 to 180 people on it, okay? So you can certainly go all the way to the back of the ship and walk to the front of the ship. It's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt you, it's not that far. Plus if you're in the back of the ship, you can easily go up the stairs too if you want to the pool or to the sun deck. It's up to you where you wanna be on the ship. I'm just pointing out that there's different pricing, okay? So pay attention. This is also on the horizon deck, okay? In the back, dark green, right here. Those are panoramic balcony suites. They're higher priced because you're up higher level on the ship. You're higher above the water. You're, you can see farther supposedly. I don't know, I've been on both cabins. Um, it's really up to your preference. This is kind of a layout on these and a queen bed or two beds, okay, one or two. We have grand balcony suites, there's only eight of them. These are 215 square feet or 210, my, oh, 210, 210 square feet. And the difference on this one is versus the other one is, you can see the table and two chairs now are actually kind of out on a balcony. So they got a sliding glass door that's gonna shut off from your room and you can shut the curtains while maybe your roommate's sleeping and you wanna sit out there and have coffee or whatever. It's just pushed out and it's a little bit farther, okay? Um, and then we have four one-bedroom owner suites. These are wonderful, walk-in closet. You get two pieces of clothing laundered per day. You get an iPad tablet to use in your room. Of course, both of these cabins got robes and slippers. Um, this one you get um, canapes before dinner and in the evening at 10 if you're even still awake. And I think that's about it. Beautiful. Only four of these. If you guys are celebrating a 50th anniversary, if this is the only time you're ever going to do a river cruise and you can afford it, I'd go for one of the bigger suites. I mean, why not? You might not go back to Europe again. You never know. That's kind of the layout on this one. This one's 315 square feet. Very nice. Nice. Okay, so Emerald's Waterways crew, you're going to love them. They're going to love you. They're friendly, accommodating, funny. 
They're going to know your name. They're, you're going to hug them and cry when you're leaving them because they're going to be making you smile and laugh. And they're going to remember what you drink and things like that. It's re they're really just great, great people. Um, so don't be afraid to ask them to bring you a beer or an iced tea or something up to the top deck because you're sitting out there looking at all the castles when we're going through the Rhine Valley. There might not be a waiter or a bar up there necessarily, but the lounge is just right down below and you can walk through the lounges or going up to the top deck and say, please bring me my glass of Chardonnay or something, uh, whatever you like. Um, and sweet dining or for the sweets I just talked about. The Reflections Restaurant, again, buffets our breakfast and lunch, and then you've got your four plated dinners. This is where you'll be having all of your meals. Oh yeah, did I mention complimentary wine with all lunches and dinners? Look at these ladies, cha-ching. <laughs> this is uh, one of the gentlemen just getting ready for some goodies in the uh, buffet time. Um, boy, I'll tell you, I'm so glad they got a lot of walking tours and some other active tours because it's real hard to pass up those desserts every day, all day long. Very delicious food on the ship. Now, one of the other places that you could also grab a bite is on the terrace. And this is upstairs by the lounge. As a matter of fact, this couple right here is sitting at a counter facing the front of the ship and the bar is actually behind them on the lounge. So they were sitting at this counter a second ago and now you can kind of see outside in front of the ship. Usually um, for breakfast, sometimes breakfast, but lunches for sure, they'll have an express, meaning, okay, we're docked in uh, one, one of the ports, we're docked in um, uh, Coplentz or um, Heidelberg or wherever, and uh, you want to get out and explore more. And you don't necessarily want to eat off the ship because we get our meals on the ship, for, you know, they're included. Uh, but you don't necessarily want to sit through that whole big buffet of array of food, and you just want to grab something quickly. There's still a lot of food up here. I've eaten up here three times. I like the soup up here. They have sandwiches, pasta salads, regular salad, all kinds of stuff. So this is just another spot that you guys can go eat. There's a small fitness center on board um, for the hairdressers are on board. That's extra fee. But if you need to get your hair done, you certainly can do that and make an appointment for the hairdresser. Maybe you want to get a little back massage done. Another, it, it is an additional fee, but you certainly can make a, uh, appointment with the masseuse on board. There's our beautiful reception area. Um, there's stairs. Look a little steep. I think I just stretched the picture. Um, we have an elevator that goes from the Riviera deck to the Horizon deck. So you do need to be able to go upstairs to get to the sun deck because there'll be sometimes if we're docked next to another ship by any chance, we may have to go up across the sun deck and down. So you do need to be able to do some stairs. This is where it's happening, people, in the lounge. Okay, after dinner, it's where we'll be going to go in there dancing. There'll be trivia games. Um, we'll meet in the lounge usually every day around 6.45 p.m. is what we used to do when I went on this ship. Uh, and they'll brief you for what we're doing the next day. So uh, they'll let you know what time the excursions are leaving in the morning, what time breakfast is, what time you better be ready to go, um, things like that. Kind of just lets you know there's a lots of different comfy places to sit in here. Maybe you don't want to sit on the top deck. Maybe it's too windy for you. Or maybe you just run to sit in the air conditioning. Uh, you still got the floor to ceiling windows on both sides. Um, so just take a seat, relax, enjoy. This is another nice place to play games. You can play uh, cards, poker, dominoes, whatever your cup of tea is. A lot of people like to play games in here. Or just enjoy, laugh, and have a uh, beverage. Another good thing is to sit during the day and take your pictures and plan for what's going on and what we're seeing the following day. You may even get some live onboard entertainment during this cruise. There's that 24 hour coffee station that I referred to earlier. So you can come up here at any time of the day, morning, noon, night. They've got cappuccino, espresso, coffee, teas, hot chocolate, and cookies. All these are cookies there too. We have a pool on board. It's on the horizon deck, way in the very back, past the last cabin. You'll go. You'll find the fitness room, and then the uh, and then the pool area. It's a nice little pool. I like to go back there and relax after lunch sometimes because I was getting a little sleepy or wanted to read my Kindle book or um, wanted to just relax. It's got a retractable ceiling and it's surrounded all by glass, so you can still see 
if we're coming up to something that you might want to get up and take a picture of or something like that. So I'm kind of neat. I'm going to just go back there and grab a bottle of water um, or make a cup of tea in the morning at the little tea maker bed in the back corner back there before I went up to the top deck to get fresh air and stretch for my, ne for my uh, next day's adventure. But what's really cool is this turns into a movie theater at night. You do have to make a reservation at the front desk, but I did have a couple come up to me earlier this year and tell me how wonderful it was to see the movie A Star is Born on this um, cruise. Sun deck, enjoy. You, have, you got room in the shade, you got room in the sun. You can even play a little mini putt-putt up there if you want. And there's a nice little walking track too. They might even have yoga classes up there. There may even be a sun deck barbecue. And let me tell you, you guys are sailing on the Rhine and the food's gonna be good. It's gonna be really good. And don't forget about those delicious desserts I told you about. We have, we have bikes on the ship and they're free to everybody, okay? So certain days there's gonna be bike, guided bike tours that you can have a choice of. You either go on the excursion or maybe you wanna do a guided bike tour instead, okay? Or maybe there's just extra bikes on board and we have free time and you go, can I take a bike out and ride it around a little bit? They're gonna go, sure. You just sign a little piece of paper and off you go. So as you're following along to your flyer, this is a time where I wanna to explain to you underneath um, each day, starting on day five, when we get to Brioche in Germany, you will see something that says Emerald Plus. And, it, and on there, it would say, um, I've got something different on here so I didn't change it, but on your flyer, it says Black Forest Cake Demonstration and Tasting. That's an extra perk. It's included. It says Emerald Active Guided Hike to the, in the Black Forest. That means that they will take you on a guided hike in the Black Forest if you want to go. Okay? And it, that's your Emerald Access. So there could be hikes and bikes, bike rides somewhere place. Just a different way to um, explore, a uh, fun way to explore independently on the bikes or with the guided tour. And if you see something saying discover more, this is really to immerse you further into local history and culture, and we've offered you an optional tour, okay? So here we go, we're heading out. We are in Brioche, Germany, okay? Um, this is a cute little town. This is where the Black Forest is. I think this would be really cool. I did not get to stop in this town on my trip, but boy, I would be really looking forward to that Black Forest hike on this one. So just a really neat little city in Germany. Um, you are going to be offered that um, Emerald Active Hike. Uh, you'll have a choice of either visiting that Black Forest Village full of charm with the cuckoo clocks and other German specialties. You can see demonstrations of traditional handicrafts, each offering a glimpse into the uh, rural life in the forest, or you could take part in the guided hike along some of the Black Forest trails. So either going into the town or on the trails. Uh, that would be a hard one to uh, pick from. But I don't think it will be a problem when we want to uh, taste this, uh, taste and learn how to make the Black Forest cake. So now we've got um, an optional tour that this is a possibility that this will be offered in 2022. I know I don't see it on your flyer right now, but it is being offered in 2021. So I just wanna bring it to attention. It's a cute little town. It's actually a French town. Um, and I'm not sure how to pronounce it because I'm going to ruin it, but I'll try it anyway. I think it's like Rickfle. <laughs> it's a popular little tourist attraction. It's known for its beautiful Riesling wines. Um, and it really still looks just like it did back in the 16th century. So this could be a possible optional excursion for you on this day as well. Um, so that's day five. We get done with day five. We have breakfast, lunch, and dinner and fun in the lounge. And on day six, we keep heading for more north. We're going to Strasbourg, France today. This is pretty cool. So once docked, we docked in a little town called Kiel. And then the coaches await. They'll take you across the river to Strasbourg, the capital city um, of the Alsace region in France. This is the, you'll get a beautiful guided little walking tour but before we do that, who wants to tell me or just think about what this is? I know you're going to guess, and we'll ask. I'll ask later when I open up the, open up everybody. Um, 
on who this is right now. Oops, let me just put this back on here. Sorry about that. That's a that's the stork's nest. That is a stork's nest I saw. And when they're driving you around in the coaches, they usually go down this one street and they were just in every tree. I could not believe it. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, so Strasburg, France, you're going to be walking through these beautiful little uh, uh, enclaves along the little river, um, all these beautiful little uh, thatched houses. And you see that big cathedral in the background? That is going to be just where we're going to stop and let you guys have some time on your own. You can go get a cappuccino somewhere, go get one of the delicacies of dessert somewhere if you want, do a little shopping, which would be nice. Um, and they'll give you some free time in this area. Now, we will be able to go back to the ship. Let me just double check on this one, what we do this day. Um, takes you along the Timberline houses. Afternoon is yours to explore at leisure. So yeah, so we're gonna have some afternoon time here to explore at leisure, which is nice. Whoops, skip up, skipped up. There we go. So now we're heading into Heidelberg. Um, we've got, uh, as you know, we just toured Strasbourg on day six and we're on day seven, which is Mannheim and Heidelberg. Look at the big castle in the background. So relax on board. The vessel cruises along the Rhine to Mannheim. We dock for this site for Heidelberg. We'll travel by coach to Heidelberg, home of the oldest university in Germany. The guided walking tour visits the ruins of the Heidelberg Castle with its fantastic views overlooking the Nectar River, and it takes you through the cobblestone streets of the Middle Evil City below. So right below the castle, when we're done with our little tour, we'll get on this like little, I don't know what you call it. It's kind of like a short tram train ride that takes you down into the city. And then you'll get off and you're walking around the city center. This is another place where you guys can get cuckoo clocks and things like that. Don't forget, you can have them shipped home, okay? Um, we'll enjoy a wine tasting before returning to the ship. Um, and alternatively, for the people that are just super active and can't get enough activity, and they don't wanna do the, the castle tour, they, they wanna hike up to like the castle, or they could, we'll give them a hike up to Mount um, uh, Koenigstrug in Heidelberg. So they can do that if they like. And there's our uh, nice Emerald Plus wine tasting here as well. So now we are heading into um, Coplens. I know this is Reichsburg Castle, but I wanted to kind of show you that um, this is just another view of like going down the river um, with the little towns and the churches and castles on the hill. You're gonna see at least 40 castles. So before we get into, um, let me just make sure I got this in correct order here. Before we get into Coplens, um, we're going to be also going into um, the Rhine Valley. Okay. So as we're as we're cruising down the river, you definitely want to be on the top deck or the lounge or somewhere where you can see both sides of of the river because they're going to be narrating and telling you all about. Um, all about uh, the river and um, all the different churches we're gonna be seeing. You're gonna see all the different castles. Just a beautiful, beautiful view as you're going down. See at least 40 castles, okay? Probably at least 40 castles and fortresses as we're going sailing down. You'll learn about the Lorelei Rock. So what's the Lorelei Rock? Well, there's a Lorelei, there's Lorelei. She was a siren whose sailors, she was scorned by her lover sailor and she was always crying out at night and they said that she lured the sailors to their doom as their ships hit the lower Rock or something to that effect. But they'll tell you a funny little story. I don't know if it's funny, but they'll tell you a little story all about Lorelei and the statue in the Lorelei Rock and you'll go and just, it'll be a wonderful, wonderful narration. Look at the river in the background there. It is really just a special treat to be sailing down this river. Um, you'll see the um, uh, failed Grafenstein Castle. This actually used to be like a toll back in the day um, that they stopped at and uh, paid toll. And then we're heading now up in day eight to Koplenz, Germany. Okay, Koplenz is a 2,000 year old town and it's situated on the Rhine in the Moselle River. Okay, 
So we're going to get in and enjoy a walking tour of Copelands. This is an included walking tour of Copelands today. We'll see the, the um, uh, uh, I, I, Aaron Breidenstein Fortress. We'll go over there as well and see that. Or if you want to do an optional instead, because they're both ran at the same time, you have to pick one or the other. We can go to Kokum, Germany, because that's on the Moselle River. I have to get you over there. And you can visit this wonderful little town called Kokum, which I really loved. Look at the castle. You can go to the castle. So Reichsburg Castle is where you can visit on an optional tour. And not only do you go on the outside of it and learn all the different things on the outside, but you can go on the inside and it's all decorated still like it was hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I kept looking for like a secret passage. I couldn't find one, but I bet you there's one in there. Beautiful views from up on top of the Reichberg Castle. Um, and look at all the nice, beautiful artifacts and uh, trinkets in this castle. Um, we are heading now on day nine. We're going north and we're going up to Cologne, Germany. Look at the amazing Gothic Cathedral as you dock in Cologne. This is where we'll be walking to. This will be our little focal point today. So we'll get off the ship. We're docked right there. We're just going to walk right into the city. And we'll, um, uh, we have a guided walking tour with your audio headsets, of course, like we always do. Um, we'll join our local guide, um, touching on some of the historical charm of the old town and its Roman history. And then we'll um, head over to that beautiful Gothic cathedral. Um, they're always working on it. You can see actually even in this picture, uh, if you really look closely, they have a little bit of scaffolding on there that they're always trying to keep it up, up, you know, fixed up and everything. But when you get really close, I mean, look at the size of the people to this. It's, it's, it's incredible. And you get to go inside and you can take pictures inside as well. Um, it's a lot of stained glass, a lot of gold, a lot of the, um, uh, Priests are buried here as well. So you can spend some time here and you can um, have a little free time on your own um, here as well. So um, it's up to you later on this evening. Um, we're gonna have our farewell reception dinner tonight on day 10, excuse me, day nine. So our next day, we're heading into Amsterdam. We're now heading into the Netherlands. And this is going to be a cool little part of your trip as well. Um, this is like the Venice of Europe, I guess, on this side of, of, the, of the country because of all the canals. Um, uh, you guys are going on a tulip time cruise, and this is what it's all about. We're going to be uh, doing Kukunov Gardens here in a minute. So our next morning on day 10, after breakfast, we depart by coach for an included visit to the world-famous Kukunov Gardens. And then you're going to discover why it's called the Garden of Europe. You'll wander through these beautiful pathways, admiring these gorgeous flowers. And don't worry, they're all sporadically um, planted so that they all bloom sporadically. They don't just all bloom like they do in America where, oops, my tulips look great on Tuesday. And by next Tuesday, they're not there anymore. They're constantly blooming. I mean, it's just gorgeous. There's a picture of me when I went um, a few years ago. Um, really easy walkways and paths to follow along. You'll be on your own here. So if you want to go into the little tent area where they're selling tulips and you want to have tulips uh, to be mailed to your house so you can plant them yourself in October, go right ahead. You want to go walk around and look at all the different windmills, tulips. You can buy uh, postcards and t-shirts and um, Christmas uh, ornaments. There's all different gift shops everywhere as well but it's really just about the amazing color of these beautiful, beautiful flowers. And boy, if you could see them when you're leaving up in a plane, uh, it's really gorgeous. So we leave there, we return to the ship. The afternoon to explore the city is at your leisure. Now you are in Amsterdam, okay? So you can just walk around this beautiful, amazing city. It's known for, like I said, the Venice of the North. It's the capital of the Netherlands. It's also, um, uh, this is a picture I took when we were out there. I just got a glimpse of one of the tunnels and it's actually got, there's like seven bridges in a row that you can kind of see, keep going down, they all go into one. Um, 
Van Gogh Museum's here and Frank's house is here. You have to get tickets if you're gonna do any of this stuff and you can order them online, okay? Um, you don't wanna wait till you get there to think you're gonna get in Frank's house because you won't get into it, okay? Uh, but you do have free time on this afternoon. So definitely something that you might wanna do or you might just wanna walk around and go and find um, a, a little pub or a shop or something and just explore. The fun thing about this trip also though, it's up to you. They will probably announce we're heading into the right red light district tonight. So if anybody's heard about those special ladies in Amsterdam behind the windows, <laughs> um, you might have a chance to see what that's all about. They'll usually have a big group of people. When I went on it, there was about 45 of us walking through town <laughs> to go and look at some of the windows and see what it's all about. And that, my folks, is your tulip time on the Rhine uh, with uh, Compass Travel and April 21st in 2022. I know you're thinking this is so far away and it's not, it's only a year and a half away. And the point is they only hold 176 people. So if you really want that category C Vista deck room for 56.84 and you wait too long, guess what? You're paying 59.34 now because you're gonna have to be closer to the front of the ship or maybe you'd rather be in the front, not in the back. If you can't get on the Vista deck, then you're going to have to go up to the top deck of the category A, and now you're paying $61.84. So it's really about getting the cabin of your choice, getting that free airfare that's good until the end of December, and then saving that extra $150. This does include your round trip transfer to O'Hare Airport and the Traveler Protection Plan. So there you got it. That light blue is category C, the purple is category B, the green on the Horizon Deck is category A. The bright pinks are your Grand Balcony Suites, and those burgundies are your one-bedroom owner suites, and of course on the Riviera Deck are your state rooms in category E and D. So um, if you've ever been on a Mayflower tour before in the last two years, say, or year and a half, you might have received what we call Mayflower dollars or Mayflower money, and you're allowed to use up to $5 per day if you still have some of those to get a little extra discount. Um, your deposit's $850 per person. Um, that includes your traveler protection plan. And your final payment's not even due until January 10th around. I'm, I, put, I bumped that up just a little bit so Stephen gets it in time to get it into us. Due about 90 days prior to departure. And I am going to leave this slide open for a minute. And then, uh, so you can, again, see the uh, phone number Travel Society at Hotmail.com is your email. Um, I am going to see if anybody has any questions that you want to either raise your hand or let me know um, if you have any questions at this time. I see uh, Barbara, Claire, Gloria, Linda.